Here today with Bill Pitzer, who's the instructor for IMC 635 Visual Information Design. How you doing, Bill? Good. How are you? Doing great. Appreciate you taking the time to talk about uh, visual information design today. Uh, to go ahead and kick off our call, uh, if you could just take a few minutes to share an overview of your career history and background uh, that prepared you to teach this course in, in the IMC program at WVU. Yeah, well, so I, uh, I'm, a, I'm an illustrator from my earliest days as a kid, uh, being an artist, and that's been an interest of mine for a long time. Um, uh, you know, the, the thing that kind of got me launched in my career was I went in the military when I was 17 and spent four years in the Air Force, uh, didn't even know they had such a thing called an illustrator and ended up as an illustrator in the Air Force which was uh you know sort of like having this great on the job training as a commercial artist so we did we did every, everything from briefings and maps and charts and diagrams to uh, cartoon shows for the general on the weekends uh you know all kinds of different stuff the one of the last things that i created was a uh, four foot by eight foot mural on air refueling for the headquarters of the strategic air command where i was stationed at and um, so I, after the military, I went uh, went to school, uh, came back home to West Virginia. I'm from Charleston, West Virginia. Originally grew up on the west side. And um, I went to Glenville State College and ended up getting a, a, a BA in secondary education with uh, two different uh, majors. One was, was studio art and the other one was, was science. And uh, with the idea in mind that I'd I, you know, I was going to try to get a job teaching, which that didn't work out. I couldn't find a job teaching at the time. And I ended up going and getting a job at the Charleston Gazette in my hometown. And so for the next, uh, we don't have to say how many years, but for many years afterwards, I worked as a daily newspaper visual journalist, worked my way up to being a graphics uh, editor, did a lot of informational graphics. I came along at the right time uh, where my career spanned going from all the hand-drawn stuff to computer stuff. Um, when I was at the Lexington and Herald Leader in Lexington, Kentucky, my boss and I went down to the Apple store before the Apple store was even opened and picked up the very first Mac computer that was on the market. And um, so I, was, I just sort of just dedicated myself in learning how to transition to that. and became pretty well known, I think, in the industry in terms of doing informational graphics. Um, at, at one point later in my career, I could see the need for more education. So I found a program at Appalachian State University. I, I live in Davidson, North Carolina, just north of Charlotte. And that's where I spent most of my newspaper years was at the Charlotte Observer. Um, and um, so I went back to school thinking that I could get a promotion at work if I got some additional training. I ended up into a, a master's in educational media program at Appalachian State that had an emphasis on new media and, and global education. And uh, what that did was it just helped me keep my job longer because by that time the newspaper career was, you know, the whole industry was in turmoil by that time. And, um, and so uh, that ended up, uh, leading me to see an ad for this IMC program at WVU and uh, and uh, sent uh, sent in my materials my graphic stuff to you guys and I think at first the first time I was there for a meeting uh, you weren't quite sure even what you were going to do with me at that point but but had determined that you know that 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 I might fit in there and that's how IMC 635 came along we got to talking and um decided we needed a visual information design program that was geared for non-designers and that's and that's got you know where, where I've been uh, working with this since and it's been one of the great joys of my life I can tell you that. Great uh, it's a perfect uh, perfect overview and segue into my next question which is uh, IMC 635 uh, the visual information design course is an elective in the IMC program and is also currently a requirement in the creative strategy area of emphasis, as well as the graduate certificate. What do you feel are the unique or defining characteristics of this course? So I think it's two things. I think, you know, we have a mix. So you have people that have graphic design backgrounds. We have people that have no background whatsoever. But all, all of the students at IMC 
need to have some type of literacy level on visual design, whether they're actually creating things themselves or they're in, uh, in, in the marketplace where they have to evaluate these things. And so it's sort of uh, the whole intent of the course now is to sort of divide that up where you, if you're a graphic designer, we hopefully give you things that you haven't thought about perhaps in the past to give you some principles and some guidelines that you can use to be more effective in the things that you create. If you're not a designer, then those same tools are good for evaluating content, visual content. And so, uh, and then, you know, several years ago now, I took a look at some of the other coursework that was required there at the university. And we, we, we kind of touched up 635 and we added some things uh, on storyboarding uh, on being aware of, you know, of, of that thing, because in the capstone program, I know that they, they end up in a lot of these campaigns for storyboarding becomes a very important skill. Uh, we went back and did some shorthand graphic design things, something we call CRAP, which is just an acronym uh, for, um, for some gestalt principles of design uh, that, uh, that uh, it's, it's context. Uh, repetition, alignment, and um, um, and design. So, uh, or, or proximity. Sorry. So, anyway, uh, those those tools are sort of like a shorthand that are it's easy for people to remember. We have a handout that we give people a little fold up. Uh, I call it a pocket book, a little fold up pocket book that you can that you can have and you know stick in your briefcase in case you want to refer to it later. That kind of thing. So that's that's sort of the where that has developed to. Great. So is there a particular kind of software package that students need to be able to use or have access to to complete the course? Not really. I mean, you know, some of the some, you know, that's always an issue <laughs> because it's it's tempting to move into software you know, demonstrations and requirements, uh, really not. I mean, I've tried to keep it so that, um, you know, it, to be honest with you, everything that you need to do uh, in terms of creating assignments and everything you can do out of the Microsoft Office. Okay, great. Uh, you know, PowerPoint and Word both have abilities for you to do some visual things with, and that's really all you need. Great. So, um, what are the top three takeaways that you hope every student will get after taking IMC 635? Well, uh, we, we kick off our coursework talking about visual perception. And so having some awareness of how the human mind works, how we look at things, uh, that type of, that, that part of it, I think it has some important takeaways. Uh, the other one, uh, you know, we talk quite a bit about sort of the general principles of topography, color, and design. So there's pieces of each of those that I think are important uh, that people can take away, that they have a better idea of how that works and how to apply that. And um, the other one is sort of, you know, as much as you want to talk about skills and ideas and things, um, you still need to have some kind of framework of um, how to get an idea from being something that's in your head to being something that's on paper. And so we, you know, the most challenging part for, for the non-designers in the, in the course is, you know, we do kind of push that a little bit to have them create a couple of graphics during the assignment process. And, um, and most of the time um, the grading of that is, is, is not dependent upon the smoothness of what they do, but it's more along the idea of, you know, are you, are you taking a concept? Are you putting it together in a way that, that would be purposeful and, and have some, you know, some intent on it at, at the end? Great. So when IMC students are planning uh, their upcoming course schedule, they'll often ask about the workload intensity of a course. And this is so they can prepare and balance their graduate studies with all of life's other responsibilities. Mm -hmm. On a scale of one to five, with one being the least intense and five being the most intense, how would you rate IMC 635 uh, visual information design? And then what made you give it that rating? Well, you know, my purposefulness about that would be that it would be a three, that it would not be 
you know, it's a graduate course, so it's not supposed to be, you know, you just walk through it. I also don't want it to be a five because it is an elective and it is something that, that because of people's individual skill sets, they're going to have different capabilities in taking the course. And I'm aware of that. Um, it, that type of grading also ends up being very personal because I've had students who have said to me, wow, this is really challenging. And those are usually the people that had no design skills whatsoever. Um, but, but my intent is to try to keep it right in the middle of that fourth. And, and I purposely have a couple of assignments that really are pretty, pretty easy to get through. It might take a little time to do it, but it's not something that's super difficult to figure out. Mm -hmm. Great. So what does a student need to do in IMC 635 to be, uh, or need to know in order to be successful in IMC 635? Well, you know, again, you know, because it's of the nature of how we kind of put this together, you don't have to have any preset knowledge to come in and benefit from the course. Uh, I think a lot of people can benefit from it that have absolutely no background at all. Um, having some conception of, um, you know, what visual design is and how it's used in the industry and that type of thing is certainly beneficial. Um, there's more and more, you know, in terms of, I would say that 635 is still probably a little bit light on terms of uh, being um, digitally intent, uh, you know, it, we kind of cover print and digital both because that's still something that people deal with in their industries and in their jobs. Um, but uh, I, I don't think there's really much that you would have to have ahead of time to feel like you could succeed in the course. And over time, that's been the, that's been the truth. I mean, some of the best students that I've had that have created the best work and have had the best feedback to me have been students that really didn't have any design skills when they came into the course. Great. So Bill, more turning from the course to, to, to you as an instructor, um, what is your personal teaching style and, and how do you meaningfully engage with students in your courses? Well, I, I have found, uh, you know, being intimately involved in the discussion is the key for me. Um, I, uh, I, I, you know, I, I, I'm, very active on the discussion board. I certainly interact with every single student's um, uh, initial posting each week. Sometimes those strings run along. Um, I see my role as sort of being more of a, a guide and a coach in those discussions. You know, if things are moving in a certain direction. I, you know, I, I can kind of maybe steer that if I see that that's something that's valuable that people are responding to and other students post. Um, beyond that is that I you know, try to provide for every assignment some meaningful, effective feedback. Uh, oftentimes that involves taking something that they've created and me taking it into Illustrator or Photoshop or something and kind of reworking it and saying, you know, here's, a, here's another idea, here's another approach. You know, if you would apply this type of uh, grid, you know, for instance, you know, this would elevate this. So I always look for the, you know, take the initial assignment and look, you know, what could, what could you do easily that would elevate this to make it more effective? That's sort of my intent on the grading. I'm not a, I'm not a real difficult grader. Um, however, I do, um, I do push, uh, you know, proper grammar, uh, proper citations. Um, I've been dinged a few times for that, um, but it's a graduate program, and uh, and 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 oftentimes, I, you know, I've had several students where I've said, you know, just go find some help. You know, get some someone that is a very astute at this. Get them to look over what you read or what you write. Uh, my best tip for. Uh, students on writing is something I learned in the newspaper industry, and that is to take what you've written and read it out loud. Uh, that's one of the best tips I can give students because it helps you catch all kinds of tenses and things when you do that. Um, you know, in a newspaper industry, when we had a big project, uh, the last, you know, big projects usually ran on a Sunday. We'd kick them off on a Sunday, and I spent many Friday afternoon sessions 
in a room where every single person that had touched that project, including you, me as a graphic designer, we went over and read aloud the entire project in the managing editor's office. That was like the final edit cut. Um, so that 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 I do, I think I think it's important. And you know, you you'll find in terms of getting employment if you can communicate clearly with your writing and your speaking. Um, it helps you a lot when it comes to finding a, more, a meaningful job. So, yeah. yeah, I do that too. I always, especially at large messages or, or messages to the whole community, I'll, I'll always read it because you hear things that, that you don't think in your mind. It's, it's kind of interesting. So, um, so, so Bill, what, what defines you as an instructor? Oh, man, I don't know. I don't know if I'm the right person to answer that. Um, you know, I, um, I the, the, teaching this course is a part of me. Uh, so that comes from the fact that I was, you know, around initially when we developed the course and, and wrote the course and, and worked that out, you know, with, with your team initially. Um, so it's, it, it's part and parcel of what I do every day. You know, I could talk about it all night long about graphic design and the nuances of it. Um, so, uh, I think I bring that to, it. I think, I think that's easy to see that, that, it, you know, I have a lot of passion and, and a lot of interest. Um, I also have, uh, nowadays <laughs> a lot of experience <laughs> in these things. Um, you know, my day job at the Hazen and Sawyer where I'm creative director, that's, that's sort of how I ended up in that job was that, um, I, I came from a journalistic background to a company that, that, that just didn't have much emphasis on information design and graphics, especially in, in my experience level, helped that a, a lot. You know, uh, it, it's, it's like a musician, you know, if, you could, if, you, if you're a musician that's played music for a long time and you hear someone playing something, it's really easy for you to pick up on some things that would maybe make that better, make that easier. And that's, that's sort of, I think, the defining thing for me is that I've had so much experience in different aspects of media and across the spectrum of all the media morphosis that's going on um, that um, that it's easy for me to find ways to be helpful. Great. And last question, uh, what has been your favorite aspect of teaching WV's online marketing communications graduate programs? Well, I think it's getting to know the students. Uh, you know, there's a few students that I'm still from way back, you know, that I still interact with on social media. Um, you know, seeing a student um, really kind of grasp the idea uh, of what we're trying to do is real meaningful. It's, you know, it's, it, when, when you're teaching, uh, you know, I've done a lot of seminars and conferences and things, um, and I've taught some you know, face-to-face -face at, at the college level, um, and you can see it, you know, you see it, that little pop in their eyes, for instance, you don't necessarily see that in the way that this program is put together, but you, you read it, you feel it in, in how they're responding to what you've said or what, to your particular feedback, um, and I've had, you know, several times when I've had one-on-one -on -one conversations and that type of thing that, that you can, you get that feedback, and I think that's the biggest thing for me is, is you, know, you want people to succeed. Um, you know, early on in my newspaper career, um, I decided that my number one goal should be to help my supervisors succeed. And so when we would do the annual reviews and everything, I would, I would put that down first. And it was kind of weird, because you don't typically hear that. Um, but it was the thing that, you know, when I quit worrying about uh, you know, can this, you know, am I going to win an award for this, that type of mentality, which is easy to fall into because that's how you kind of gauge success in industries. Um, when I gave up on worrying about the rewards in my own work and just trying to be the best that I could, um, and it opened me up to being more available to my colleagues. But that really was my initial, you know, my very first thing for my own personal uh, annual uh, review was that my number one thing should be to help my supervisors succeed. 
So, and I feel that way about the students. My goal is to help them succeed. I want them to come out of the class with some skills and some ideas that they didn't have before that helps them go on down whatever road they're going on. Well, great. Well, thank you very much, Bill. I appreciate your insights on both the IMC 635 Visual Information Design course, as well as your own teaching philosophy and approach. And uh, thanks so much for the insight. You're welcome. It was great talking with you.